Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Dearly beloved, once again, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I would like to begin with a few words of introduction to the Gospel according to St. John, as well as to the theme that we are going to meditate upon in this Lenten season. <clears throat> We all know John's gospel is different in three ways. One, <clears throat> as we read John's gospel, we know that it is of different kind and it is on the higher level, particularly in the intellectual level. Whereas Matthew, Mark and Luke, they lean more on narratives describing the life history of Jesus Christ. Whereas John, he wants to give importance to the preaching of Jesus Christ as well as teaching of Jesus Christ. So in some chapters, he goes on to four chapters to tell us about the full teachings of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 7, we read about four living creatures surrounding the throne of God. And sometimes people interpret it as the four Gospels. The lion stands for Matthew, ox, because Jesus is portrayed as the lion of Judah in uh, Matthew. And in Mark, is symbolized as a person who serves on sacrifice. So ox is the symbol for St. Mark. And of course, the man, human figure, symbolizes Luke because in, the, in that gospel we come to know that Jesus is portrayed as a human who came down on earth and lived a life like us. And of course, the, the fourth one is the eagle face. So that symbolized John as he flies high in the sky with uh, deeper meanings of Jesus' teaching. The second unique thing about John's gospel is that it is said that he wrote it after reading all the three gospels because he was arrested and he was in the island called Patmos and he came back to Ephesus and there he was an old man and he had the three gospels in front of him and he felt the three gospel writers missed out many miracles. So he wanted to write what the other three left out. And of course the teaching also. <clears throat> the third one is that if you carefully read John's Gospel, you will find <clears throat> John failed to give the description of the events of baptism of Jesus Christ as well as the Lord's Supper. In John's Gospel, he will say, Jesus came towards John the Baptist to the river Jordan. But he, even, he won't explain the baptism of Jesus Christ. In the same way, in the upper room, he would wash the feet of the disciples. He will start with, let not your heart be troubled, in chapter 14. And he goes up to chapter 17. And then in 18, John says, they left to get some money. So why John did it? They say he, d he did it deliberately. Because even during his time, people made baptism and hol holy communion as a ritual. Not understanding the real meaning of baptism and real meaning of taking holy communion. So he was upset about it. So he deliberately missed those two events or the narration of these two events. Why? As I said, he wanted people to 
go into the deeper meaning of these sacraments. It's not that he is against baptism. It's not that he is against taking Holy Communion, as the Salvation Army uh, people do. <clears throat> he explains the meaning of baptism in chapter 3. When Jesus had a conversation with Nicodemus, there he brings out the real meaning of baptism. You should be born again. You should have new life. And with regard to the Holy Communion, in John chapter 6, we read the real meaning of taking, taking part in Holy Communion. Eating is flesh and drinking is blood. And he explains it, what it really means. So John's gospel is slightly different. The second thing is that we are going to meditate upon the I am sayings of Jesus Christ. Now we know in the Old Testament, when Moses insisted that he should know the name of God, God simply said, I am who I am. Just that. Then in the next verse, I've given the reference here, in the next verse, God says, go and tell the people, I am sent me to you. So who sent you? I am. Simply I am. And of course, we translate it as a God who is as he is. Or I will be what I will be. That's the name. Because Moses was a little upset when people talked about God. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even when God talked to other people, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No name. That's all. God doesn't have a name. Now when Moses insisted, he said, I am who I am. Now we see Jesus Christ time and again using the phrase, I am. In Greek, it is ego, eimi. When he walked on the water, on the sea, and the disciples were really scared, they thought it was evil spirit. And God said, Jesus said, no, ego, eimi. It's me. It's me, don't worry. Then again, when people questioned him about his existence, from time immemorial, Jesus said, before Abraham was born, I am. Again, he uses the word ego, eimi. Because before Abraham was born, I am. I was there. So, we know that in the Old Testament, Jesus existed. And in the New Testament, he continued to exist. And he claimed, I am. And Jesus made many claims. Altogether, we have uh, nine claims. Now, including the claim that he said in the book of Revelation, it comes to ten claims of Jesus Christ. That's what we are going to meditate upon. <clears throat> now, with regard to today's uh, theme, I am the bread of life. What exactly did Jesus mean when he said, I am the bread, I am the food? Now, in order to understand it, we should always remember that we cannot lead our Christian life without Jesus Christ, with our own effort, with our own strategy. We cannot lead a good Christian life. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Once a bishop went to your church to conduct a confirmation service. And he was a little annoyed when he saw one person walking here and there during the worship service. So he called the pastor, who is this fellow walking here and there during the worship time, disturbing people? And the pastor said, Bishop, his name is Moses, not this Moses, don't worry. <laughs> His name is Moses, the baby Moses in the Old Testament, and he was floating in the water. This Moses 
floats in different kind of water. <laughs> so don't get upset about it. Then after the service, the bishop called him. <clears throat> Moses, come here. I want you to get rid of this bad habit. I'll give you a strategy. So bishop took a piece of paper and he wrote, <clears throat> how much do you drink? Bishop, I drink one bottle on Sunday. <clears throat> okay, Sunday, one bottle. Monday, three-fourth. Tuesday, half. So he reduced slowly, and then Saturday, zero. So in that way, you can quit this bad habit. And Moses was happy, Bishop was happy, Pastor was happy. Now, after one year, he came to conduct the confirmation service, again in the same church. And he, was got, he got angry when the same person, Moses, was walking here and there. So he called him after the service, what is this? I gave you a strategy how to quit this bad habit, but you, I see that you're still drinking. Bishop, I strictly follow what you said. What? What did I say? Then he took the piece of paper and showed him. See, you said Sunday, one bottle, and Monday you reduced it, Saturday, zero. See, Bishop, again Sunday came. <laughs> So I took the paper, what you have written, it says Sunday one bottle. You now many a time in the Lenten season, <clears throat> we leave out certain things, but pick it up after Easter. That's wrong. Now, with our own strategy, we cannot lead a holy life. We cannot lead a good Christian life. Only through the help of Jesus Christ, we can lead a good Christian life. Now, as food is essential to our physical body, Jesus Christ is essential for our spiritual life. We need food. In order to understand what Jesus meant by saying, I am the bread of life, we should always go back to the actual food, the normal food the material food that we take. So I would like to share a few things about that. Before that, I want to share with you um, how bread is considered in the Old Testament. Probably you can go to that. Old OT background for bread. <clears throat> there are a few instances where we see bread and wine offered as an holy elements. First, we see Melchizedek. In Genesis chapter 14, we see Melchizedek, who was also a king as well as a priest, came to Abraham and offered him bread and wine. So before, even during the time of Abraham, bread was considered as a sacred object or something that is offered to God. And again, in Exodus chapter 12, we see... God making the people to sacrifice a sheep and eat the flesh. Now, after that, he also said, smear the blood on the doorpost. No, now, those two things help them as they flee from Egypt. Doorpost, the smearing blood on the doorpost save them from the angel of death. Now, eating the flesh, they were strengthened by the flesh, or the eating the meat or mutton, and then the next day, they were able to run away from Egypt. So, the flesh of the, the meat gave them strength, real strength, to flee from the place. Okay, again, we see some food strengthening them. And as well as in Exodus chapter 16, we read about manna that fed the Israelites for 40 years. So 40 years, the manna sustained them, enabled them to live for 40 years. Again, in Leviticus chapter 8 and 21, we see bread was used as an element 
part of wave offering. No, that is waved before God. <clears throat> then in the food offering, again we see bread was considered as a sacred, sacred uh, object that is offered to God. Then, fifthly, I would like to share with you what Isaiah prophesied. In chapter 55, there we read, again he is talking about bread, but it was a different kind. Let me just uh, point, read out the important uh, verses. Come, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? And your labor for what? That which does not satisfy. So here we see Isaiah talking about bread, but you can buy that bread without money. And he was not talking about the material object, food. So he was talking about some other bread which you can buy without paying anything. It's free. That bread is none other than Jesus Christ. So we know from the Old Testament passages, even God was pointing out towards a spiritual bread that is Jesus Christ. Now, let me also share with you, there are two kinds of hunger and two kinds of bread. One, physical hunger. And God is concerned about that too. Just because we talk about spiritual food, that doesn't mean God is undermining our regular food or the bread. <clears throat> okay? Because we know that Jesus took the five loaves and shared it with 5,000 people. He wanted them to eat. When he came to Bethsaida, which is a hometown of Philip, he called Philip. See, we have come to your village. Why don't you feed us? Why don't you get the food? Then he said, no, no, no. These are too much. The budget is high. You cannot do it. So, so Jesus performed the miracle and he fed them. Jesus is concerned about material food too. We have to eat in order to live. Secondly, he is also talking about spiritual food. Particularly, if you look at John chapter 6, there he see, we see people came to Jesus Christ even after he had gone to Capernaum. The miracle took place in Bethsaida, feeding of the 5,000. Now, only one boat left, the disciples. They knew that Jesus did not live. But when they came to Capernaum, they saw Jesus Christ there. They didn't know that he walked on water. When people asked him, how did you come here? When did you come here? Jesus said, see, you are running after me just because of material food. I know you want to eat. You want to see miracles after miracles, giving you food, filling your stomach. No. Believe in me. Believe in me. I have a different food. My flesh and blood is a food for you. But they didn't accept. They didn't understand what he was trying to say. So they insisted, Moses gave manna from the heaven. You do the same thing. Then we will believe. This is a sign that we want. And Jesus said, no. I'm going to give my flesh and my blood for you to eat and drink. And they got confused. Now, in order to understand what Jesus really meant by symbol symbolically talking about his flesh as bread and his blood as 
wine as blood is blood we can go to actually what we eat and how we eat the secret to understand the theme the bread of life simply lies in the way we eat that is the secret i found okay how do we eat you go to a restaurant a five star hotel or something we have the rows of food items buffet system so what do you do you take a plate you go and search for nice tasty food okay then you eat it you sanctuarily have your meal and then you are satisfied your heart is satisfied your stomach is full your soul is satisfied okay then what happens that's not the end after eating it gets digested the food gets digested and you know what happens so in the intestine all the nutrients and everything is absorbed and they strengthen your body it makes your organs function in a normal way okay it gives you energy to work and to play and it doesn't stop there after you are enriched by the food you continue to live you have the energy not only that you have the immunity power you have the immunity to fight against bacteria and viruses have you realized during the pandemic time many people in great numbers died in other countries but not much in india you know why it's our food the saffron or the ingredients that are put that we put in our dishes gives us immunity it strengthens us so much so someone said indian food are full of medicines you know actually food is a medicine and we are strengthened by it so food really strengthens our body and enables us to fight against all the viruses and bacteria and helps us to lead a healthy life now take all these things apply to jesus christ that's what i'm going to do how do we do that <clears throat> okay what is the meaning of eating jesus christ for this i picked up a phrase somewhere which i read somewhere eating a tv program i was wondering what is this eating a tv program it simply meant metaphorically you like a particular program and see it if it is a series continuously so you like the program and you start watching it so you like it and then what happens as you watch the program you internalize what is portrayed in the program sometimes children watch the cartoons they internalize the values portrayed in the program spider man super, super, uh, superman powerful powerful girls so many other things they see now they pick up the values from the program that is called eating a tv program now in the same way we are called to take jesus christ in our life how do you do that as you pick up different tasty dishes in the same way realize that jesus christ is a person 
who gives us good life. You can enjoy his fellowship. As we sing in a chorus, sweet Jesus. We, don't we say that? Yes. We say sweet Jesus. He tastes like a honey, the comb. So first thing is to, as you like the tasty food, Jesus, you, you are called to like Jesus Christ. Found him as a tasty person. Find him as a nice person. Find Jesus Christ a friendly person. So you like Jesus Christ first. Then, like eating a food, you ask Jesus Christ to come inside you. As you partake in the Holy Communion, we take the bread and wine. It goes inside our body. What does that symbolize? It symbolizes you invite Jesus Christ to come into your life. He is the real bread. This is just a little wafer. This is just a symbol. And we take it as a holy element. Why? Because the wafer stands for the flesh of Jesus Christ. And whatever Jesus Christ gives by breaking his body is given through this little wafer that we eat. They symbolize it. So when you drink the blood, what is accomplished is that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. So, as you partake in the Holy Communion, you receive Jesus Christ into your life. Then as Jesus as time and again points out in chapter 6, he says, Eating means believing in me, trusting in me, completely hold on to me, believe in me and believe in my words. The words of Jesus Christ really strengthens us and enables us to lead a good Christian life. And as he says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, again in chapter 6, 56, he says, I want to abide in you. As friends exchange love between each other, Jesus wants to have friendship with us. He wants, to, he wants us to enjoy him. As you enjoy a tasty food, the Lord wants you to enjoy him. Do we really do that? Yes, many a time we think of him as a God, as a savior who died on the cross. But do you think of him as a friend? A person with whom you can talk to as you talk to your friend? You can talk to Jesus Christ casually. It's not that you have to kneel down and fold your hands and close your eyes. You can talk to him anytime. One person's question really shook me. That is, he asked me, Pastor, how many times do you pray? What are the times that you offer prayer? Then I started thinking, what is this? When do I pray? Then I said, see, I always think of him. I should ask this question, when I don't pray? I told him that. Actually, I should ask me when I don't pray. Because the time that I don't pray is very, very minimal. Probably during the time when I sleep or when I talk to somebody. Otherwise, as I prepare the sermon, as I see many things, I always converse with God. So I always think of God. So as you converse with God, you are really praying to God. You have fellowship with God. You enjoy the fellowship of Jesus Christ. You can talk to him at any, every moment and receive his guidance. Now, let me share with you the things that prevent us from enjoying Jesus or eating Jesus Christ. In this Lenten season, we are called to cut down our regular food. Some people give up me eating meat. Some people, some other things. 
Some people reduce the quantity. Sometimes people fast. All these are meant, Lord, you are important more than the earthly food. I want you. You are my real food. As Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. We need the word of God to sustain. That is, there is something else that sustains us as food. That is Jesus himself. Jesus himself. So give importance to Jesus rather than the physical food. The second thing is that sometimes people over concentrate on earthly Jesus. You know the phrase Buddha, Jesus and Gandhi. You will see that the rows of pictures in some places. Okay. They always equate Jesus as a human being, a great person. That's all. Nothing more. But if you realize that he is not an ordinary person, he is God himself, then you give importance to Jesus Christ. Now, many a time we concentrate on the earthly Jesus, but the Lord wants you to experience Jesus Christ as he is now. Read the gospel. Know what Jesus had done. But always come to the place or come to the position where you ask this question, what is Jesus Christ doing to me now? What is Jesus Christ doing to, to my family? What does Jesus Christ do in my... Uh, Jesus Christ does in my workplace? So always move from earthly Jesus to Jesus of the present time, divine Jesus. Then as we read in chapter 6, 31 to 35, as people asked Jesus to perform a miracle like Moses, he said, no, that's an old way. I am doing something new. He gave manna. Now I am giving you my body and my blood. This is a new way. Take it up. Now this tells us Not completely giving up old days, old ways, but always look for new ways of expressing our faith, new ways of showing our gratitude to God, and submit to the new ways in which Jesus leads us. It could be in church. It could be singing some different uh, songs praying in different way, doing God's ministry in different ways. Many a time we get stuck up with old ways. Old ways are good. And it was best in those days. But what about now? The Lord wants us to move on to the new areas, move on to new ministries, new ways of doing God's ministry. So when you give importance to new ways that God leads, you are giving importance to Jesus as a living bread. Then, of course, when people give importance to the perishable things like money, position, wealth, pleasure, worldly pleasure, then they try to forget Jesus as the real bread, real food for our soul. L let me move on to the blessing that we receive by eating Jesus Christ, that is having, taking him in our personal life. You enjoy his fellowship. I really mean what I say. You enjoy Jesus Christ. Many of the time people don't enjoy Jesus Christ. They always keep him away. No, let him come close to you. You come close to him. Have fellowship with him daily. And experience his peace, his contentment. He gives us meaning in life. When you have all these things, you really enjoy Jesus Christ and you eat his blessing. Then experience Jesus' abundant life here and now. 
Many a time people think we need eternal life. Yes, that's true. Jesus gives eternal life. That's true. But at the same time, many a time people forget that Jesus gives us life on this earth. He wants us to have the life in full. Let me come to that when I talk about I am the way, the truth, and life. Then Jesus gives us energy. He gives us strength. He motivates us to do good things. And you will be able to do it only with the help of Jesus Christ. If you try it with your own help, with your own strength, with your own experience, it won't work. Start doing with the energy that Jesus gives. And realize your authority as a child and grow in the image of Jesus Christ. We take food to grow. Children take food to grow. And of course, horizontal growth is good. <laughs> Vertical is good. Horizontal is not good, isn't it? So the Lord, whatever it is, the Lord wants us to grow in our spiritual life. Growth is another blessing. Then, as the food gives us immunity, Jesus also gives the power to face the evil one. You can drive off the evil one. You can say no to the evil one. Evil thoughts, evil actions, evil motivations. With the help of Jesus Christ, you can say no to all these things. That's why we need the bread Jesus Christ. Now, let me close with a few challenge questions. Probably you can ask this in our daily basis. Do you feed on Jesus daily? Just on Sunday? Just on Wednesdays and Lenten season? No. Feed on Jesus Christ every day. The second thing, do you do your work and fight your battle in life with the energy or the nutrients, symbolically, that Jesus provides you. He gives us strength. He gives us forgiveness. He gives us leading. He motivates us. Have you saturated your mind and heart with his living and loving words as the nutrients go all over our body and then intestine takes it, takes them, and spreads it all over our body. In the same way, the Lord wants you to be saturated with His words and with His ways. Then, of course, there are two pits. We have to be very, very careful. We have to be warned about. That is self-sufficiency. I don't need Jesus. Oh, I'm well-educated. I have good experience. I have enough in my life. I am self-sufficient. No, never say that. We always need Jesus Christ. As we always need food, physical food, we always need Jesus Christ. Another pit is that superficial feeding. Just go to him only when you need something. Oh, Jesus, I want this, I want that. No. Talk to him at any time. Have deeper fellowship with him. He is your friend and he is your bread. Just keep a moment of silence. Loving God, we thank you for this blessed day. Lord, thank you for enabling us to meditate upon your claim. I am the bread of life. Yes, Lord, we acknowledge that you are the real bread, real food for our soul, for our Christian life. Help us to feed on you every day, every moment possible so that our life would be enriched by your blessing so that we could lead a good Christian life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.